Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you've been on Twitter, the Gaming Drag today, I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Coffee Buns. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Yep. Okay. The customer performs the usual double take as he notices the three of us in our varying stages of infirmment. Wait, this isn't a Kimono Cafe, right? No, nope, we're just trying out something new. We just serve regular coffee here. Oh, okay, because the theming here is way, way inferior to the actual Komodo cafes in town. Ash, Ash stays stone still except for her tail, which bristles to add another few inches on each side as the customer approaches the counter. He glances up at the menu, then down at each of us, then back up at the menu. He sneaks another glance toward me, and I back up against the counter, pressing my cotton tail into a fuzzy disc. I can't imagine it's taking him this long to make his decision. Anything you need guidance on? He chuckles. I know what coffee drinks are, thanks. He spends a few more seconds staring at the menu before looking straight at Ash as if noticing her form for the first time. So, you're a skunk. Yeah, I just found that out today, actually. Huh. That's funny. Pardon? It's just funny is all. What's funny? Just turning into a skunk is all. I don't think I've seen one before. Just kind of funny to imagine walking around as one. Ash cla Ash's claw scrapes the underside of the counter. My boss looks up from restocking napkins on the booth tables. Why is that funny? The customer smirks. You know, just thinking about what skunks are known for. Which is? The customer looks over at me, expecting me to share in his amusement. Well, you know, smelling bad. Ash's eyebrows raise the merest amount. Oh, really? Yeah, I was just imagining a skunk walking around New Greenshire and people behind them falling over from the smell. Classic cartoon stuff. Ash pulls an espresso cup from a stack and toys at the rim with one claw, taking her attention totally away from the customer. So... Sounds like you have some experience with furry stuff. Been to the cafes? Oh yeah, I was into this stuff before the tea was even around. I'm an er I'm an ermine when I have it. Hmm. Interesting. So you probably know a lot about animal behavior then. Probably more than most people. So you know why skunks spray then? Yeah, of course. So you know they only spray when threatened. The customer looks away. Yeah, I guess. So it only make any sort of scent when I was up against someone I thought was frightening. Well, I guess the- but the tea kind of follows cartoon logic sometimes. She clanks the cup on the counter. So you know the only way you'd smell one whiff of my all-natural pepper spray is if I thought you were- there was the slimmest chance whatsoever that someone could provide even the slightest threat. The customer gulps. Right. Right. What's your order? White chocolate hazelnut frappe. Eight dollars. Thanks. He taps his card on the register and presses the button for the biggest tip suggested. Your order will be out shortly. Do you need my... Not necessary. The customer slinks over to one of the booths our boss just finished cleaning. Ash goes about preparing the drink while I take her place at the register. And just in time for Roman to walk in the door. My heart skips a beat and I turn to take a half step toward the back room before realizing it's too late. Hey, bro, looking good. Uh, uh, hey! He sets the mug I gave him this after gave him last afternoon down on the counter. I started his drink, hoping to distract myself. Naomi texted me about you trying the tea today. Wanted to see how you turned out myself. Oh, I guess she probably told you about the uh, ears then. Nope, kept it a secret so I could see for myself. You look dope though, super sharp, bro. I grip my teeth. There's no way I actually look sharp. Naomi felt like the only the only one telling the truth when she called me cute. But I'm not about to accept my roommate calling me that. You're like a Jackrabbit Leonardo, freelance barista. I blow on my bangs and feel the tip of my lop, my, my lop ear lift a smidge. I don't know about that. It feels like I'm more of the house pet variety. Yeah, aren't his ears just the fuzziest? I want to rub them so bad. She reaches for my ears with both paws and I barely hold onto my mug as I'm stirring the espresso. Jesus, don't touch those! Don't you have a drink you're making? Nah, I'm all done. Non-threat! Order's ready! <laughs> the customer shuffles over to grab his drink and makes a beeline for the door. No, seriously, you gotta get my mitts on those Primo Velveteens. You're looking great too, Ash. Punk skunk, I love it. Wrong subculture, but thanks anyway. Metal skunk. And our lovely proprietress, looking the most graceful of all. My boss joins on joins us at the counter. Do you go around flattering old women all day, Roman? Uh -huh, only my favorites. And the ones who might give me tips. Mm-hmm, bud. But Mehmet's a lucky man. Boss chuckles and I hear that little growl again. I'll tell him at least one man thinks so. 
I slide his cord I slide his cordadito across the counter. So, uh, your drink's ready? Thanks, bro. He lifts the mug and cheers. Salud! He takes a swift pull, then pulls out three bills. For the furry staff. So will I so will I see you for the elusive second day in a row? Ah, right. I guess Naomi's gonna wanna run down. I might try and make it over. Sweet! He takes his mug and heads out the door. The three of us are left alone. Well, I think that first day went just swimmingly, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that shit was f <clears throat> Yeah, that shit was fun. Real different. So I imagine it will take some time before we see any results from my little experiment, but I have a good feeling based on some of the customer interactions we had. Minus that last one, I suppose. But thank you both for indulging my little scheme. I'll help close up. You've both already been here longer than usual. It's fairly quick work to pack everything up for the day. I don't get off as easily as I did yesterday, but in another sense, I didn't get off easily at all. Our boss locks up behind me, and she and Ash head home in opposite directions. I linger next to the entrance and pull out my phone. Hey, I'm actually not feeling great. Do you, uh, don't know if it's the tea or I just caught something, but I'm gonna head home. I planned on sending the text the moment Roman asked if he'd see me at the bar later. In a sense, I wasn't even lying. I didn't feel great, but bruised my ego after turning into a fluffy bunny rabbit would have been oversharing. Roman responds with a quick no problem, bro, and I pocket my phone before heading to the subway station. I don't have to wait long for the train. I'm thankful I don't have to spend much time on the platform where someone could take notice of my ears and tail. Not that I would have noticed with my eyes glued to the floor. My early commute always leaves plenty of seats available, but I don't want to feel my tail against the, set, the seat back. I find a support pole to lean against, and the train jolts into motion. For the first few minutes, I continue staring at the floor. Booksy taxi, interesting. I try not to think too much about the day's shift, or how I reacted to the, my transformation, or how my coworkers reacted to, their, to theirs, or what the hell I was even expecting. You weren't getting to turn into some apex predator, you know that, right? I do, and I know that's not even what I'd want. I just don't know what I'd want. Ash's transformation is transgressive and intimidating. The boss is as regal and authoritative. Naomi's is graceful and welcoming. Roman's would apparently be playful and energetic. Mine is... nothing. There's nothing interesting about being a rabbit. At least not a guy rabbit. I know it's silly to be morose about an aspect of myself I didn't even consider having until last night at the earliest. What animal kimono tea turns you into isn't a field you have to fill in on dating apps. At least not the ones I'm on. I might never even, it might never even come up again. As much fun as Ash and my boss seem to be having, I'm not confident they'll stick with it. Especially if it doesn't move the needle in terms of customers. And I doubt they'll care if I abstain. I was definitely my own, I was definitely my own susceptibility to peer pressure that made me try to tea, try some of the tea today. Not their insistence. At least you didn't have to pay to find out. I smirk at my attempt to paint the slightest, the, sli the slimmest of silver linings on the situation. I finally look up to take in my surroundings. I scan past the spattering of other passengers until my eyes until my eyes land on an ad. It's for a taxi company, showing a woman stepping out of a cab in a scant cocktail dress, presumably ready for a night on the town. She's well endowed in the way you might expect for a model in such an ad. Maybe beyond that, it feels like they're getting away with far too much for a banner on public trans transit. I wonder if they have some kind of standards and practices department they had to run these things by. The ad is doing its job, and my gaze remains fixed on the woman in her dress. The tight, sequined sleeve of fabric accentuates and shapes the woman's curves, her bust almost breaking free of its constraints. As per usual, I split my focus between the dress itself and the woman wearing it, though the tight, custom fit goes a long way towards making the impression they're parts of a whole. The train hits a rough section of rails and I jostle along with everything else. It's a particularly jarring sensation, I feel my chest shake far more than usual. With nothing else to do besides pull out my phone, I permit myself to imagine accompanying the woman on her date. Hmm. A curious little bunny, are you not? I conjure images of holding her hand, the backs of my knuckles grazing her dress as we walk. I'm not much of a dancer, but it's, been a, it's no effort at all to daydream about accompanying her on the floor. We stay locked, facing each other, a blue to the crowd around us. When the time is right, I pull her close and we press our bodies against one another. I feel the fabric against me, and I feel the warmth and softness of her breasts against my chest. I really feel the warmth. Ah, interesting. I don't know how I'm daydreaming differently this time, but I feel a distinct warmth in my chest. There's even some tingling to it. There's always some amount of buzzing sensation when my mind wanders onto such topics, but it's usually not there. Never this intense. Oh my goodness. 
The heat's enough that I pinch the front of my shirt and flap it a few times to cool myself off. The moment the improvised breeze hits my nipples, <laughs> my knees buckle and I fall back to fall back to leaning on the pole. What the hell was that? There's no way I should be getting this worked up about an innocent daydream about a girl I saw on a subway ad. My breath goes shallow as I take the time to focus on the sensations that grip me. The heat that affects my chest is sweltering now and the buzzing pro progresses to a series of static shocks. I can't remember a time I've had a reaction like this until I realize I'm casting my memory too far back. Am I still reacting to the tea? Tingling and, and heat is indeed an amplified version of what I felt when I transformed. I'm left to wonder what else could change to make me more rabbit-like, but my imagination doesn't get too far. Not when the change happens so soon. My chest expands on either side of the pole I'm leaning against. At first it only pushes outward as, peak to as, peaks, to as peaks top of my nipples extend into my shirt, forming two crests. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, I hope this is a content warning, yes. Okay. Okay. That's fine. This is okay. They each extend an inch, then maybe two, looking like stakes under a tent. I went to the sensitive points rubbing against the fabric of my shirt. But there's more to come. Unsatisfied by the narrow, angular shapes, my body pours itself into my chest. A gate opens behind it, and two streams of heavy, gushing mass flows into me. Huh. First, it simply fills in around my nipples, turning what were once acute peaks into soft mounds. A sloping suppleness spreads across my chest, forming two delicate... Breasts? I'm growing breasts? Once their name is invoked, they cease their cautious pace and more flesh courses into my frame. My legs tremble and my toes turn inward as I moan as quietly as I can. The skin on my expanding breast stretches to make way, way for more, becoming more sensitive with each inch added. They're both big enough to envelop the pole between them, the hard shaft nestled in the cleavage between them. What the hell's happening? Oh god. I reach up to touch my new endowments, and the moment I graze the skin through the fabric, I have to suppress an even louder moan. Oh god. I slide down the pole another few inches, my breast taking a second or two to catch up. The sharp sensation of touching myself shoots to my nipples, making them even harder, and down- Oh boy. Yep. Fuck. The train switches, switches again, and the shaking motion is transferred to my breast, which jiggle in exa exaggerated echoes. My dick swells against the, again at the sensation. Just as I'm about to lose hope of holding on, the heat and tingling abates, leaving me panting against the pole. My head is swimming from the experience, and it takes me a few moments to catch my breath and remember where I am. I look up to see a single person at the opposite end of the carriage who's taken some notice of me. I jolt up straight, and my breast follows suit shortly. I lift my forearms up to cover myself in a pastiche of feminine modesty as I turn away and head into the next car. I've never been so thankful to live so close to work as my station arrives a minute after that. I whisk myself the few blocks to my apartment as fast as I can while still clutching my arms tight to my chest. It's less effective at minimizing them as I would hope. Some of the flesh squeezes out from the sides of my arms, and no matter how hard I press down, I still feel the rise and fall of each footfall as they sway up and down. I can't imagine how crazed I look, but I make it to my front door without anyone interrogating me about the new tits I've grown. Hmm? The moment I walk in the front door, I let go of my chest. Keeping everything pressed tight against my ribcage was so painful I'm willing to forgive the way things sway the, the way the things sway as I walk. Both of them move of their own accord as I walk across my living room, straight in a straight line to my bathroom. And, and I slide inside, flick on the switch, and see exactly what I thought I'd see. Two soft mouths protruding from my shirt. For a moment I don't move, taking my time to fully accept what's happened. In the way this in, the way, in a way, the sight of them is the least important piece of confirmation I've received. Feeling them grow in was more intense than anything else that could happen. But now there's nothing else I can do to verify their existence. Well, almost anything. Oh boy. I grab the hem of my shirt and the ball of the fabric up. I do not want to inadvertently graze anything up against my nipples again. Alright y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Oh, oh. Alright, y'all. I, I gotta get ready for work. Love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.